one of the things we can do in, in business one is we can see down here I have some message and alerts. And here we have an example of an alert where I've actually triggered a AR inventory alert showing me that, hey, whenever this, this item gets below a certain minimum stock, I need to be notified. And you'll see actually here that my minimum uh, level is 75. I've now got 50. And it's showing me the document that did that. Now, just for an ex uh, just for an excuse to go look at an item master, let's take a look at this item. If we grill into this item, we can see that this is a fairly new item I've got. It doesn't have much purchasing history. I can tell that because I can just drill right in. And I can see my purchasing history. I've actually only got one purchase order ever on this. I just put this in the other day. But I can see that I have several vendors, and those vendors also can have their own price lists. That reminds me, I need to put a sales price on this. I forgot to do that. Let's set it for 550. And I'm going to hit update. Oops. We can see this inventory. We can see it where it's at in the warehouse. If we plan it, we can see that I buy it. I buy it biweekly. I have a minimum order in a uh, multiple minimum order of 200, and I order it in the units of 100. And it's got a 14-day lead time. That's important because that's going to feed into my MRP at a later on later date. Now I could also have properties. Uh, remarks and an unlimited number of attachments on this. That just kind of give you a, a quick view of an inventory item. So as I'm jumping through my day, what I'm going to start off here with is a, a quick sales order. So I've got to start off with my sales order here, and I'm going to look for a customer. Let's find Silver Star. Oh, that's a nice alert. Um, yeah, sure, why not? But that is an example of that. Now, if I wanted to hang that order, block the customer because they're of extent, I can do that too. Uh, Friday demo. And let's go down here. So a uh, couple of things I can do, it's called a formatted search. Very simple, just I pre-programmed this without custom programming. I just told this, this little thing to say, hey, when I click here, I just want to take this date, add 10 days, my, my standard delivery date without putting it forward. So I'm going to go down here and we're going to look up an item. I have 400. I don't know exactly what. So I just type down here and I want that. I want maybe the fitting and the line pipe. So notice the order in which I click. Notice it showed me my inventory status on both, my minimum inventory requirement, and that I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to choose that. And it's going to bring them in in the order in which I put that out there. Now I'm going to come down here and maybe do a little subtotal. And I maybe want to uh, add in that A0001 because I need to flesh that out. And let's put in another subtotal. And a subtotal after that gives me a line total. All right, so I can see what we're doing on here. And maybe I want to insert some predefined text. So I can have a text blurbs here. And just thank you for your order. Very simple, very easy. I also can have pre-canned stuff that's associated with the form, but this lets me have seasonal stuff that gets replaced as time goes on. Of course, we're going to pull in our default uh, shipping and logistics information, our accounting. Uh, all this information flows through from the MasterCard. And I'm just going to hit Add. And based on my settings for this person, I can then fax or email this out straight from the system. If I want to fax it, I can fax it. If I want to email it, I'll email it. And it's going to, again, bug me about that uh, credit alert, but I've said that's okay. Now, copying it to a sales order is really easy. I'm going to, just, or delivery note, I'm just going to copy to a delivery. And there it goes. So it's actually copied everything from the sales order to the delivery. Now, what the delivery note is just saying is that we've, uh, this is the delivery note means I've delivered the goods off the invoice. And so what it lets us do is have it a one-to-many and a many-to-one. So if you have a customer where you're shipping them all the time, but they only want one invoice, this is a great way to let you do that without uh, complicating your, your back office operation. So I'm just going to come over here, and it's going to tell me that, hey, this is going to cause that inventory item to say yes, and I'm just going to say uh, yes to all. And it's going to tell me that you can't change the document once you add it. Why? Well, because we're doing good accounting in the background. So I've hit inventory raw materials, and I've hit cost of goods sold. So what we're doing is we're we're hitting here is we're hitting um, we're hitting goods shipped but not invoiced, and then what we're going to pull back is we're going to hit uh, we're going to we're going to we're going to deliver the goods but we're creating hitting a sub account where we're increasing against those customers that it's shipped but not invoiced. 
when we invoice, we're going to relieve that ship, but not invoice account and then uh, hit accounts receivable. So let's go to copy and I'm just going to copy to AR. You'll notice that I'm not having to type a lot, which is great because that just creates opportunities for mistakes. Now, I want to also point out that you'll notice that these screens look very similar. So we're seeing an AR invoice. They're really every screen in the system has four main terms, contents, logistics, accounting, and attachments. And so when I come over here, I have my date. So the importance of this is that because there's only a few screen layouts, it's very easy to learn the system. Very easy to learn, very easy to uh, maintain. So for users, it's very easy for them to come in and quickly learn. Now, what if you don't call logistics logistics? What if you call that shipping? Well, we can just come over here and just type in shipping. Of course, you need permissions to do this. And it's that easy for me to change that tab to adopt your user, your uh, company nomenclature. Now, what if you're not doing all this other stuff here? Well, let's just clean up this screen while we're at it. It's called the form settings. So, and this is now we can define templates so that we can actually have different different people using different templates. I'm going to click on my table here. And let's go down and let's just get rid of some columns that I don't use. Holy smokes, there's a bunch of them here. There's actually a bunch of information. And we're gonna get rid of everything that's not even remotely relevant to this person. Because if it's not relevant, why should they have to look at it, right? There we go. And a much simpler screen. And now, actually, I'm gonna go down and uh, fit the column with. Frankly, you know what? I wanna make one more adjustment because I am kind of partial to descriptions. So I wanna add the item description here because I know a lot of people don't need it, but I, uh, I kind of like having it. And I think people tend to like having that information available to them. There we go. That looks much better. That easy. So no, no custom programming, no technical knowledge really whatsoever. Just go in and click. And if you want to move stuff around, you can actually drag them and put them where you want. It's pretty straightforward. And we're just going to go hit add. Again, I'm getting my alert on that credit limit. And we're going to pull this over. So I'm going to take a look at something else called the relationship map. And what you're seeing right now is the relationship the relationship so we see that sales order I took followed by a delivery and now it's turned in with an AR that AR invoice on the Friday demo and it's red because it has not been paid if I wanted to see the items involved I can come down here it would show me the items right and or if I wanted to see the journal posting say I wanted to see the posting details and I would be able to see the journal entry as well so this visualization is just kind of something SAP's put together to make it very easy for people to see what's going on. Let's go down and let's uh, leave this uh, invoice open. Let's go do an in incoming payment. Close all that down. And I'm gonna do an incoming payment. So Silverstar happens to be the fastest company paying company in the world. So <laughs> right here, and I can see their open AR. I can see that this is uh, that invoice I just shipped. And I just come down here, I give it, click on the money tags. I'm going to see down here, right click, copy balance due. You'll notice I'm really not having to type anything. At this point, I can uh, just hit OK and add. Now let's go refresh that invoice and take a look at what's going on on that. Just click my refresh button. Now I want to just take a look at that relationship map and you'll see how this has already been created for me automatically as a byproduct of me just simply using the system. And so you can see that this is updated, that's paid, and there's that associated incoming payment. 